There's all sorts of ways that we can we can bring color uh, to our illustration. You know, the obvious way would be to select an element, um, and in our swatches color palette on the left, we have a variety of like pre preloaded colors, and we can we can click those and we can select those and we can we can change them up. That's that's great. Um, but I think we want to be a little bit more considered about it. I think we want to um, think about what the color palette is going to look like. How do we construct that? How do we choose those colors? You know, there's a little bit more thought behind it. But the first thing that we need to do, I'm just going to uh, undo those steps. The first thing that we need to do is that we need to prep uh, the document and the illustration area for color. Okay. And the main way that we do that uh, is by using this tool, uh, which is the live paint bucket. Um, and that's actually like a really powerful tool, um, which, is, which will automatically help us select uh, these flat areas of color um, and be able to bring them to the forefront. Okay, so we want to make sure, first of all, that there's no filled areas here. You know, if we Apple Y, that gives us the wireframe of it, and we can see how all of these lines, they're all like sitting nice and tight to each other, okay? What we want to try and avoid is having like big gaps between these lines, okay? So we want to spend a little bit of time just going through the illustration and making sure that these lines are, are fairly tight, okay? It doesn't necessarily matter if the lines are overlapping a little bit, um, but then again, we don't want those to, um, if they're overlapping too much, you're gonna start to see these uh, come through as like little loose ends, okay? And we wanna, and we wanna avoid that, okay? So what I generally do before I start adding color is that I go through and I make sure all of these lines are sitting pretty tight to each other. Um, what I usually do for that is that if I have an overlap, I'll select the line, I'll select the, the scissors tool. We use this quite a lot in the, in the last section. Make sure it's brought to the front and we'll just hover over and we'll and we'll click it on there okay now what we want to make sure is that we have our smart guides turned on okay and that allows us uh, to find the edge um, it will automatically find the edge uh, of the line and the illustration okay the other thing that we can do obviously is that we can just uh, align that ourselves okay You'll notice that because we have smart guides switched on, when we get, it will automatically like intersect with where those lines touch. Okay. So what we probably want to do is go through the whole illustration and make sure that these lines are like pretty well, pretty tight, and that there's no big gaps between any of those. The idea is that wherever these lines touch, that's going to become a, a fill area of its own that we can color independently. Okay, um, we may have the odd, the odd line which is, which is sitting outside. It's maybe not quite lined up properly. It's it's not a big deal. Remember that we have a certain thickness to these lines. Um, all of these lines, I believe, are uh, set to four points, you know, so we can we can get away with hiding some of these loose ends. Uh, but if we have like little areas where, you know, lines are sitting out, we can just like move those a little bit. The other thing to bear in mind is that we have a lot of detail here. We have a lot of elements like 
say for example, like these tree branches, okay, these are not going to get a fill. You know, these are going to be, these are going to remain as uh, vector lines. We're not going to, and the line color can change. It's not going to have a fill color assigned to it. So we don't need to worry so much about those um, being open or being too close or being far away. What we really need to concentrate on are the areas where the large areas of color are going to intersect. You know, like this section here, this section here, down here. We want to make sure that those are like pretty tight. There's not like big gaps. We can get away with a little, a, a little gap, but we just want to be careful um, about having too many, uh, too many gaps in there. Again, like when we go through and we and we live paint this, none of it's final. You know, we can we can manually adjust. Uh, we can redo elements. Uh, we can revisit parts that that we think might not be working as as well. Um, so nothing's nothing's set in stone. Nothing's nothing's finalized until we until we decide.